Alright guys, in today's episode we are going to deal with setting up the environment needed to get Vitronic hand flasher running and set up our interface. And the first thing we want to do is to download the all-in-one runtimes. This is made by some German guy, I don't know him personally. No, not every German knows another, I don't know. Uh, but maybe it's just me, who knows. But yeah, um, you can download this from that site, I will put the link in the description. And it's going to take you to a website called Computerbase. You're going to click download here, download starting. It's around, as you can see, 380 megabytes. I've downloaded that already, so we're going to skip on that. And what it does is basically to download this file and you can make a double click on it. And what this is then going to do, it's going to extract its files to your PC. Now this can take up to 5 minutes, I've seen PCs with very slow hard drives so this took up to 10 minutes, but this is a virtual machine with uh, an appropriate hard drive speed, so it should take like 2 minutes. And while we're doing this, we can take a look at the drivers we're going to need for our interface. You can find them here, I will add support the link in the description, no worries. But you need to know one thing before downloading here, you see there are two versions for Windows. A 32-bit and the 64-bit. Some of you might know the difference, for those who don't. If you have a PC with 4 GB of memory, you have to download this one. If it has less than 4 GB, you have to download this. And if you just don't know, and you have Windows 10 like me, here, uh, I'm simulating this for you guys, this is why I have a virtual box. Uh, you can go on System, and your Settings, About, and you will see your 64-bit operating system. So you can then be sure which kind of uh, bit you have. So if you want to download the 64-bit version since this virtual machine has 4 gigabytes of memory, but I will let's just skip on that since I've done it. It will be just a zip file, but I will get to this later. And now this is almost done. And now it's going to ask me if I want to give this program access to my hard drive, like to modify it, because we want to install something. So you go, you're going to click on yes. And you see the timer here? Just just click on that. And what you want to do in this case, I've already ran that, but um, for you there will be more options on the left side. So something like um, uh, virtual, uh, red, uh, for the Redis something, uh, Visual Studio, or was, uh, I don't know, C++, some, some crap like that. Just leave it ticked. But what you want to untick is basically this one, the first option, like with Java, you don't want to, you don't need it. Untick Adobe Flash Player, untick this, the Shockwave Player, and untick Microsoft Silverlight, and then you're going to click install. And then this program, it will just run through all of that, and it's going to download. Uh, download, install everything needed. Don't untick the net framework. This is necessa necessary, this is very recommended by me, so just leave that and that and the other options. But untick those four. They're not needed at all. So since we have done that already, we can now go and set up our drivers. And for that, guys, we're going to switch very quickly to the real life. All right, guys, so what I've done here, I've plugged in my interface into my PC and just one of the USB ports. Um, one thing already at hand, unfortunately, uh, my PC crashed the first time I wanted to record this. So uh, the drive is installed now and unfortunately, I can't really show you um, like how it looked when it's not installed properly. But I will just tell you, uh, you can see that this LED here, this indicator LED, it's a uh, yellow glowing or orange, however you want to call it. But if it's not set up for the first time you plug it in, it, it's most likely going to be red. Now, this is not a big issue because I deleted the drivers. Oh, it, it's just reinstalled itself. I will just delete the drivers here again. So you guys can actually see um, what this is all about. And yeah. By the way, this is the so-called Geräte Manager in German. In the English version of Windows, you can just enter, you go to the control panel. I I just did this virtual box, so we have everything in English. Control panel, hardware and sound, 
device manager. And then you should see exactly the same window as I. So as me, sorry. Um, and yeah, what we want to do next is to actually install the drivers and set them up. This is really important to set them up, but I will get to that later. Now let's make a little cut here and go back to our PC. Now, as you can see, I'm in my device manager. And remember this file we've downloaded, it's basically this one. And what we are going to do now, make, I've, you should make a right click here and uh, extract it. I've done that already, as you can see. And there's not a, no install in this. You see, these are just some files. And now we want to install them. And nope, there's no install in this one either, so it needs to be installed manually. And this is basically the OBD link. It might appear different in your PC. For me, the first time it has appeared actually as OBD link SX, but uh, without drivers. So to install those, like these files, we're going to make a right click on this one. Update drivers. Search on this PC for drivers. And then you can s click here on Browse. And in my case, it's on desktop, so I will just select the folder where I've instructed those files, click OK. And I'm going to click on Next. And now I just hope my, my PC won't crash like the last time. And as you can see, it worked. And it didn't crash, yes. Okay. It's really that simple, by the way. You, you're actually almost done. But now it's really important to set up the interface for appropriate reading and writing speed. This is crucial. I've seen it happen that people like, um, you know, they, they just install it, okay, put the drivers on, and then a flash took like 30 minutes or read out. So this really isn't nice. What you want to do is to make a right click on this one and go on properties. Then you're going to get on connection settings. I don't know if this is called in English, but just to get the second tab and okay we'll just make this default this is what you will see the first time and the bits per second we want to change them from 9600 uh, to 191600 so to the very last option so as much bits per second as possible so you can click on ok and go here again again the same tab now this time you click on advanced and what you want to change now, and this is good, it didn't took the setting, it's the latency on the BM settings. Change the latency, and this is the default value, from 16 all the way down to 1. If you have a very, very old PC, a very slow one, I recommend going with 2. Just try. Okay? But I will pick 1 because this is like my default setting, and I will click on OK here. Okay, here again, as you can see, this kind of reads starts. And make sure after you see this just disappeared and appeared again, but the settings you've made here are the same. Just check that again. And you see all the settings are the same, so we can close that. And now we can move actually into the electronic can flasher. Okay, here we have electronic can flasher. For the first time, this will be like blank. You can just select VCU type, electronic 8 main. You just want the settings to be opened. So click on settings. And you can see my adapter is here. Here you see the other supported interfaces, which you saw in the previous guide, but we save it for OBD Link SX. The adapter, in my case, for some reason my PC reckons that I have two serial adapters installed. Um, this has nothing to do with the interface, it's just something, maybe it has to do with some um, EDL flashing cable for Qualcomm, I don't know. But as you have seen in the device manager earlier, there was something in, in um, something after the name of an USB serial port device. There was something written COM5, and this is actually the COM port. So for me it was COM5, I will pick that. And the COM speed, I go with 1 Mbit. You can also try 2, but 1 is pretty decent. And you can disable logging if you want to, but uh, I would just leave it enabled and the rest like it is. Now one thing which is really, really, really important. The first time you run the Tronic can flash and you have set everything up here and you're going to click on the X, it's not going to save your settings. And then people, you know, they, they go into the car, click on get ECU info, read ECU, they can't get anything. 
So make sure to click for the first time if it's really important on save. And this guys was already it. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I could help you a little bit. My plan is to upload the next guide in my car showing you where the OBD port is located in the 93 second generation, um, how to make a readout, how long it's going to take, how to flash a file, so I will just show you the most crucial basics.